we breathe. The arms can be hollow. The fingers can be hollow. Even our nails can be hollow. And of course, the neck that rises from the floor, the front of the neck and the sides, spacious, empty, and the head resting on the floor. Well, if there's a back of the head, there must be a front. We explored that in the previous lesson. And the sides where the ears are, What's the distance between the tip of your nose and the floor? Your forehead and the back of your head. So the head fills, is filled with space, you might say. The cranium, the skull, even the jaw. So let go of all those in particular parts. And just as we did with the five lines all in one thought, just Allow yourself to be available to the space that you inhabit right now, in this moment. From the soles of your feet to your head. As you breathe, filling, emptying. Good. And then would you please bring your hands so slowly, gently, to the back, towards the back of your head, make it easy, such that the thumbs rest under the protuberance at the back of your head that's in contact with the floor, and your fingers can envelop the, the back half of your cranium, and your skull. And just let, let them rest there a moment. And you can feel your hair. Maybe you can even feel your way into the skin and the bones of the skull. And this will allow us to feel the space between our hands, which is the space of the skull in the back. And we can sink and feel the contact your whole body makes with the floor and the specific distance between the hands and the fingers, where our brain resides. And then please very slowly sort of bring your hands forward and cover your eyes with your hands such that your right hand covers the right eye and the left hand covers the left eye. And there's no contact between that lovely space in the palm and the eyelids. So the eyes are free to blink or not. And move your elbows in a little bit and so that you can check to ensure that you're not pressing the eyes. You're just covering the eyes. And if you move the elbows, you can feel that your shoulders can move. So you can let go of any unnecessary work or tension that you're holding in your hands or arms. And let your eyes rest. And just allow them to, well, what's your first sense of the space of your eyes. Not looking for anything in particular, but just get a sense of how you feel your eyes today beneath your hands. And notice what you see. What, are the, what, what is it that you perceive when the eyes are not looking at anything? Is it colors or shapes or dark? Or, what is it? There's no right answer, it's just what it is. And we might come back to this later and see what it is that you see when the eyes are not looking at anything in particular. Good. Let that go. Let your arms come down to your sides again. And just as as Ned invited us to do earlier in this le the lesson prior to this one, just roll your head a little left and a little right and get a sense of how it is after that first lesson and a little break to roll your head a little left and a little right. And as you're rolling your head, can you also include in your, in your uh, imagination, you might say, the midline. So you're rolling your head left and right. 
and feel the midline from your pelvis to the back of your neck where your head meets the spine to the top of your head and roll your head in such a way that you barely go from left to right. You can find the sweet spot where there's no effort and it feels somehow delightful. And notice, is it easier on the left or the right? Good, let that rest. Leave your head as it is. Feel again the contact you make with the body. For those of you who are new to this experience of awareness through movement, we take a lot of rests. And in those rests, the brain has an opportunity to process, if you will, to, to snip and curl the little neurons to learn from what we just experienced. So the rests are very, very important. Good, now imagine your midline again and extend it from your back through your front right to the ceiling. And you can extend it below you, to the, the, like right to the floor below. I think the lobby's down there. You can extend that midline to the floor below us. And feel it right from through the whole of our self, from between our legs right up and back. And then you go back to your spine, the vertebrae of your, of your back, and to go back to this sense of space within us. And imagine that this sp the spine, of course, is bone, but within the spine, within the vertebrae of the spine, is a hollow tube that runs from the pelvis to the head. Can you imagine a hollow tube running, expressing the midline? Like a reed pipe. And let that go. Please bring your tongue to the space between your two upper teeth. And then let the tongue go back to its resting place. And check to see if there's a space between your upper teeth and your lower teeth. And allow your mouth, your jaws to soften such that you can allow a little room between your teeth. And bring your tongue again to the two front teeth and begin to trace a line with the tip of your tongue but soft and easy, up through that midline that exists inside the cavity of your mouth. So you're going up in the direction of the roof of the mouth, the hard palate. And as you go, check to see that your breathing remains easy. You know all the bumps and ridges very well. The tongue spends a lot of time feeling all those spaces. And when you get to the top, Come back down towards the two front teeth, softly, easy. And then cross over the space between your two teeth and take your tongue, sort of curl it back underneath the front lower teeth of the lower jaw. But only move as far as is easy, similar to rolling the head, just where it feels comfortable, not where you're straining in any way. And do that a couple of times. And each time, use less effort. Check your breathing. Right? Check your throat that it doesn't tighten. And then come to rest again. And by the way, at any time, if you wish, you can bring your legs into standing if that makes you more comfortable. Now, please bring your tongue again to this mid place. Of course, your tongue has a midline also. Can you get a sense of that? And then bring your tongue up to the roof of your mouth, in the middle. And bring your two thumbs very, very gently to the space between the two bones of your lower jaw. So you're under your tongue. It's a 
muscle place under between the triangle of your lower jaw. Bring your two thumbs there to rest. So that you can feel that soft or hard place, whatever it is for you. And with your tongue at the roof of your mouth, please press the tongue hard towards the roof of your mouth. And then let it go. And then press and let it go. And then press and let it go. Make it hard when you press. And what's happening with your thumbs when you press your tongue up? What are your thumbs doing? Where do they go? In what direction? Relative to your vertical self. Hmm? So you can play with that between your, your tongue pressing and the movement of your thumbs as they go down. And this is all one muscle. So what you're doing is you're feeling the bottom of your of your tongue when your thumbs are here. Now, just stop that for a moment. Leave your thumbs where they are. And take your tongue from the mid place between your two upper teeth and trace that line up towards the roof of your mouth. But do it in such a way that you do not trigger the muscle uh, that of the lower part of your tongue to push your thumbs. For some, that might be a, an experiment that's new. And you can soften that tongue. So the tongue will become different. Yeah, you're just pressing your tongue up into the roof of your mouth. You're feeling the knot occur at the bottom. And then we're learning to take the tongue up the midline so that we don't force that tightening at the bottom where your thumbs are. It's possible to differentiate the movement of the tongue from tying up into a knot. And just let that go. Let your arms come down. And just roll your head a little left and right and see how that is now, having played with the tongue a little bit. Is there a change in the range? Is there a change in the quality of the way you can roll your head? You see, the tongue is a very powerful muscle that sits, in fact, on the top of the spine. And when it's soft, the spine has a greater range of movement. And that'll affect, in fact, the whole body. Tighten it up once. Just press quickly and feel what happens in your abdomen. Hmm? When you tighten it, what happens in your breathing? Try rolling your head when your tongue is pressed to the roof of your mouth. What happens? Great. Let it go. Yeah, it makes a difference, eh? <laughs> OK. So now. Bring your tongue again to the uh, two teeth. And imagine you're going to paint a line with your tongue up the midline of, to the top of the roof of your mouth, the top of the palate. And then paint a line, the same line, come back down and curl the tongue and paint that midline in your sense, in your sensation, in the bottom jaw. And clarify that for yourself a couple times. And check your breathing while you're doing it. Really important to find a way to leave the tongue soft and juicy. That's how it likes to be. And then bring your tongue up, please, to the roof of your mouth at that middle place. And begin to take your tongue from the, that top place of the palate over to the molar area uh, on the left, on the right, I'm sorry, from the midline to the right, as if you're painting to the tooth. And then come back to the midline and do another line to the next tooth down. So you're going to make a zigzag pattern along the right side of the roof of your mouth. And do it in such a way that the challenge is, is to leave the tongue soft and easy. So you can check with your thumbs to ensure that there's no knotting going on in the muscle of your jaw. 
And if it does, just go back, soften up again, and continue. Right? It's a simple thing, but it can cause all kinds of reactions in other parts of ourselves. As you're making that zigzag motion, notice if there are any other parts.